Apparently, Vince McMahon and Nick Khan got bored last night during SmackDown and said, What's next? NXT? Fire them all! Good lord. WWE dropped the hammer on the NXT roster. I think the total count was like 12 or 13 folks got their walking papers last night. And it's not so bad just that 13 people lost their job. It's not so bad that 13 people, you know, get released and miss out on the money on the contract, da 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 It's the fact that they did this not only on a Friday, that's bad enough, but then to have the balls to try and do that literally during SmackDown. Like, why would you be doing this crap during SmackDown? Why would you do anything at all to take away attention from the product that you want all the wrestling fans and other fans to pay attention to on Friday night in SmackDown? That absolutely makes no damn sense. If you want to do this kind of greedy ass money grab, budget cuts my ass, so be it. But the timing reeks of incompetent stupidity. Sheer, unadulterated, incompetent stupidity. It absolutely does. Because why would you do that? I do that on a Tuesday or a Wednesday or do that over the weekend. Like any other days you could do it. But literally one of the three days of the week that you probably shouldn't or one of the two, one of the days of the week that you shouldn't for sure, you shouldn't do it Friday night while SmackDown is airing live. So that way more people are talking about WWE releases while a WWE show is going on than the actual WWE show that is going on. Do you get my drift here? Fucking stupid. Now look, I know I've talked about some of these releases in the past before. And it kind of runs the spectrum here a little bit in terms of opinions. Some of it I think it's a really bad look when you're talking about budget cuts, when you're bragging about your record profits that you're making. It's a greedy money play is what it is, and a kind of a pathetic one at that, to be releasing so many talents. Now you can sit there and say some of the ones that they released were a dime a dozen type and weren't doing anything, and I don't disagree with that. You can also say that some of the ones that they've released, it absolutely made no sense, it was completely, totally random, especially because they had just been recently featured relatively prominently on television. Why the hell would you take all that investment and just flush it down the toilet? And again, a valid, legitimate criticism and question. Because that's stupid, it's random, it makes no sense, it feels like a knee-jerk reflex reaction. Which is something you maybe used to expect from the Vince McMahon of old, but you absolutely, absolutely, positively, lutely expect that now out of old Vince McMahon. Doing his best Al Davis impression. So this is. Like most of the names that were released on Friday night, I don't think you miss one way or another. Some of the ones like Mercedes Martinez, like wasn't she literally injured and relatively prominently featured on television at least, at least recently and you're letting her go? Seems questionable. Bronson Reed was the big one that shocked everybody. Like, wasn't he a North American champ a couple of months ago and now he's gone? Like, again, that seems really random. Well, what seems really random about this from an NXT standpoint is it's not like you're paying these guys or gals that much money. You can't possibly be saying that you're saving that much money. It just I refuse to believe that because it just doesn't make logical sense. Wrestlers, sports entertainers, whatever the fuck you want to call them, throughout the industry are massively underpaid. And yes, that includes your precious damn AEW too. When you look at the amount of viewers that they get for the segments that they're in on television, how consistently they have to do it, and all the other demands that go along with being in the wrestling business, they're massively underpaid. So... The, the whole budget cuts bullshit just doesn't really hold up any water. And we need to stop throwing that out there as that's a valid, legitimate reason. That's a crock of shit. Now we see the reports that came out on Saturday today talking about how this is part of a rebranding and a relaunching of NXT and a changing of NXT. And that's to me where it gets a little more interesting. Because that's probably not the worst thing in the world, and let me explain why. When you look at NXT, NXT got into this situation where it became 
WWE's third brand. It became Triple H's playground. It became their place to get some main, or not some mainstream, but some more hardcore, smart interest in the WWE product and said, this is the brand that's 100% for that audience. We don't care about making it a mainstream brand. That's not the name of the game here. And if we could poach away a little AEW viewership or get some of that AEW viewership to also check us out, all the more power to it. And instead of it becoming a developmental territory where everything that you do in NXT is designed to get these guys and gals ready for the Raw or SmackDown main rosters, which to be clear, once again, is 100% the name of the fucking game. It at least was when Dusty Rhodes was still alive and Dusty Rhodes was still very heavily involved. All of a sudden it became this whole thing of Hunter wants to do his own brand and Hunter wants to not have it be about all that. He wants to do his own thing and not really think about developing these guys and gals for the larger scene, the larger main rosters. And you got this huge disconnect there. And a lot of times where you're talking about, well, this is just going to be another NXT casualty where they get called up to the main roster and they get buried. That certainly happens. And it's both Vince McMahon's fault and Paul's fault. It's Vince's fault for not better understanding the talent that he's bringing into the fold and not having something laid out for him for the first six months of the year because if you're going to bring him up to the main roster, why in the fuck wouldn't you? But then it's also Hunter's problem because he's the one that's doing all these shit with these guys and gals that isn't preparing him for the main roster. He works incredibly closely with his father-in-law. He knows his father-in-law as well as anybody else does. That isn't Stephanie. That isn't Linda. That isn't Shane. So as a result, he knows how Vince works and sometimes doesn't work. He understands how Vince thinks or a lot of times doesn't even really seem to think. But he understands Vince. So he knows goddamn good and well half of this crap that he's doing with NXT and more with some of these guys and gals that the smart hardcore fan base is going to geek out about. He's setting these guys and gals up for failure once they get to the main fucking roster. And that's a fact. And when you look at the fact that their viewership for NXT is less than half of Raw's and a barely a third of SmackDown's. Like, it clearly shows you that this is a jobber brand. I shouldn't say jobber brand. It's a C brand. It is a developmental brand. And it probably is time to sit there and get back to those roots. You know, the roots that help develop you somebody like a Roman Reigns. The roots that bring you some of these other guys up like the Dean Ambroses and the... Seth Rollins is in the world now, the Damian Priest, and so forth. Da, 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 da. Like, that's what it should be about. And if anything, you got into this weird place where they were signing all of these guys from the independent scene where really they didn't need a whole lot of developmental time because they weren't going to get a whole lot better. So if you're signing them, you should be signing them with the main roster in mind. And I even think about what you're talking about now with Adam Cole. Like, how much better has he really gotten in the past few years? How much better? He largely is what he is, maybe a little change, maybe a little growth, but not enough. But the point I'm getting at here is, if you were going to bring him in, you should have been bringing him in with the thought of, you bring him in, maybe he spends just a tab at a time in NXT, not be a goddamn NXT lifer, and then you put him up to Raw or SmackDown. Like, that's the ultimate name of the game here. Not everybody needs to be a lazy-ass chompa who sits there and says, I don't want to go anywhere else. I'm happy with NXT. I want to be a bum and I want to make a fraction of what I couldn't fucking make because I have a loser's mindset and mentality. Tommaso Ciampa clearly does. Allegedly. These other guys and gals, though, that understand this is a business and that you have a certain period and window of time, they should be wanting to develop their skills to get up to the main roster where you're supposed to make the big damn money. So if you have to drop a bomb and release a whole bunch of these wrestlers, even some of the painful ones, to get NXT back to its damn roots of this is supposed to be developmental territory that is supposed to develop these guys and gals for Raw or SmackDown, then I'm 100% on board with that. Because that's what the fuck this needs to be about. It needs to stop being Triple H trying to sit there and stay relevant and cool with the hardcore smarts that eventually, guess what, turn their freaking backs on them anyways. That still doesn't change the fact, though, you cut somebody like a Bronson Reed, you're investing relatively heavily on him from an NXT standpoint, and then you just release him? That's stupid. That makes absolutely no sense. Like some of these other talents, yeah, probably a dime a dozen. 
For those that are sitting there and say, well, they have a roster with well over 200 wrestlers. Yes, they do until you realize you got to break that out and you say, how many of them are on Raw? How many of them are on SmackDown? How many were in NXT? How many were in NXT UK? How many were on 205 Live? Like when you start looking at that, like, yes, it's still a bloated roster, I agree. And some of these cuts, while painful and, you know, not with the best optics and visuals, certainly you can point to them and say, you know, there's a piece of it that it makes sense. Like, you have too many people, you're not going to use them. AEW can't sign all of them. Like, it just doesn't make sense to continue to pay all of them to just sit around and do nothing or to sit there and not be able to get any real return on that investment. That's not great business. I agree with that to some degree. But you cannot sit there and say that every single one of these releases makes a whole lot of sense. That's bullshit. And to those that are sitting there and trying to say, it's business, you did, you did, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Because you go back to the Bray Wyatt release, that's absolutely not good business because this was somebody that you have invested years in, a damn near decade in, who actually moved merch for you. Who was an established name and face on your brand. You are now just basically washing your hands and dumping them off so that way your competitor, who's not a competitor, but absolutely you're starting to think of them as a competitor, is going to be able to sign them and get all of those benefits. You basically propped up somebody to help the competition. That doesn't make any damn sense. Bronson Reed, just a couple of months ago, was a North American champion, and now he's gone. This is somebody you should be preparing to face off against the Romans, the Drews, the Lashleys, the Big E's of the world of the future. You don't have a bunch of big or giant dudes. He was one of them. Everybody that you're bringing into the fold, you would think you should be looking at it and saying, okay, this is somebody that's going to work with these guys. Or this is somebody that might potentially work with like an AJ Styles or a Ricochet or depending on where you're at or the tag teams. This is somebody that's going to work with the Usos or this team or that team. Blah, 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 blah. And you look at a lot of these signings and it certainly doesn't feel like that's what we're doing. So again, because of Hunter, NXT's totally lost the plot. Because of Vince, this company's wasting money, time, energy, effort, and resources into people that they're just releasing for the fuck all of it. Like, none of this makes any goddamn sense, and I stick by my Vince McMahon to old Al Davis comparison. Al Davis Hall of Fame owner. Al Davis won three Super Bowl championships as owner of the Raiders. But the last decade of his time at the top, the last decade of his life, he ran that organization into the damn ground. And all these knee-jerk, reflex, reactionary moves that made absolutely no goddamn sense, and Al was too stubborn and old to fucking listen to anybody, had to have complete authoritarian power and control, and look at what the hell it did to the Raiders that haven't been the same since. When you look at the WWE, you see a lot of these random reflex reactionary moves that don't make a whole lot of sense. That people try to justify as much as they can, but they can't because they just don't make a whole lot of sense. And even when you look at the slight things that might say, you know, I could see the logic in it a little bit. You just know that it's all going to be prone to change again at the whims of one old crazy senile man in a couple of months. So yeah, it sucks all these guys and gals lost their jobs on Friday. Even though they're not technically jobs because they're not WWE employees. They're independent contractors. Semantics my ass. I get why they did it. A lot of them, you're not really missing anything. A couple of them absolutely made no sense. But again, I think it just speaks to the larger disconnect with what the vision and the purpose of what WWE does and what WWE does with the different arms and wings of what it is. The fact that you got so far away from the core of what NXT was supposed to be with what Hunter's done with this bastardized version of NXT over the past couple of years has become a problem. It's a sizable problem. And, you know, that is a brand you should be looking at to identify the next stars and the future stars, the next generation. And it's clearly failing at that. And regardless of the reasons why you think that is, that doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it is failing. And that is a total systematic failure by everybody involved with WWE, which leads to this place where you're releasing a bunch of wrestlers on a Friday night during SmackDown to divert attention away from your flagship show. That's stupid.